Swin. Welcome to Kansas City. Thank you so much. Uh, is, is this your first time ever in being in the Midwest for a festival, or? This is my first time for a festival, yeah. yeah. I've been in Topeka, though, for a road trip. I saw the famous people. I started uh, with the uh, shooting television shows back in the 90s. Um, and I went down to documentaries because I wanted to shoot, I wanted to find stories within people's lives. So it felt like the long form of the documentary felt so organic to me. I'm also a very, I'm a person that likes to observe and try to get what's going on right here, right now. Um, and I talk to people and I how the situations. So the whole documentary situation felt like right on for me. Um, after a while, I wanted to discover the feature filming side also, so I had a little side uh, path there for a while, uh, which I did. I shot features and commercials, um, and I really never felt like it wasn't quite organic for me in a way. Mm -hmm. um, it's something, it's something in documentaries when you work with it that gives at least. Photographer, I think, a lot of freedom in the moment to work with the, with the gut feeling what's going on and to use that at the same time uh, as shooting, not like just produce or reproduce the vision of the um, of director, but instead actually this is going on right here and now and I'm going to capture it. That feeling, that's something that really triggers me and it makes me actually a better uh, DP as well. There. Yeah, it's very much uh, uh, get, letting out the adventurous part of oneself. I feel that too. Uh, traveling and meeting different cultures, people that lives, are living in completely different situations, uh, is something that is very exciting. One, you, you learn a lot about yourself, strange enough, but you actually really do that. But more, more also, you learn about other people, so it gives you a better understanding how the world works. Because it's very easy to just limit your world to pretty much the space you are in, and that's it. And uh, with that, you limit yourself too. You, you don't really see how big your own life is. And your life is pretty big, you know? Everyone's life is pretty big, but people don't always know. Now, uh, you, cur you currently live in, in New York City. Uh, do you kind of, do you split your time kind of evenly between uh, here in the US and Sweden, or j just constantly traveling around depending what you're working on? I, di I did before, when I first came here seven years ago. I was going back and forth the first years. I was still like very much Swedish and I had my gigs going on in Sweden. Um, you know, you, you get sort of torn after a while where, where you actually are supposed to be also. Um, so I felt it was very important after a while to actually focus on exactly one spot and just do that. So I very rarely go to Sweden and shoot. But a sweet, uh, for Swedish television and, and European production companies and BBC, when they come over here, I shoot for them. Okay. I am, New York has sucked me in. <laughs> I can't get out of there. What is the Mongolian dream? Good question. It's the main question. <laughs> the Mongolian dream uh, isn't that easy to find, not, not in the beginning at least, I felt. I was looking and looking, and I felt like I wanted it to be, be a film about the dream, the dreams that people somewhere else, that is just a mystery to me, who they are and where they come from, what do they actually dream of, what they want to get out of life. Is it the same dreams I have, or people that live, you know, live in, in the same Westworld areas as I do? Um, that was the question, that was the quest. What was it about uh, about Mongolia in particular that sort of led you to quest? You know, there's a guy called Genghis Khan. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have like stumbled up on that name and like, wow, was he conquered? Like, he was, it was like the biggest landmass together. He kept it together also very well. It's like a pretty impressive history Mongolia has in the 12th century. Uh, a third of the whole uh, surface of Earth that was actually Mongolia. Um, so, uh, all the way into Europe. So, and I was wondering, like, what is it like to be coming from a tradition and a culture and a history and knowing where you come from? And now you're a little nation 
pretty much forgotten. Not, but really, who's talking about Mongolia? Uh, squeezed in between Russia and China. Uh, I wondered, what does it feel like? And if they have a strong connection to the history and the culture, that must be really strong, I suppose. And I felt, as a Swede, I don't feel that so much, my connection with my history. I don't feel like my culture is so strong. I don't feel like we have a strong bonding between us because of, you know, where we're coming from. We have like a bunch of kings way back somewhere, you know, but no one really cares or talk about them. Uh, but Mongolians, how is that? I had, I had a wish list when I went there. My, my first trip there 10 years ago started with pretty much being a research trip. I just wanted to figure out uh, if I could find people that could be interesting to follow. And I wanted to, I wanted to find a diversity, a mixed, very mixed group. Mm -hmm which would be like a slice, a little thin slice of, uh, of Mongolia. I mean, this is, really, this is really a portrait of five different characters, and not so much specifically Mongolia. It's not like a, a history lecture, or I don't have any lecture here about Mongolia and, and a lot of facts. It's more, it's more and it gives us a little idea of what Mongolia is, and that there is another nation out there that is forgotten, but there is, they have a whole life going on there. And they are on the rise. They have been forgotten for many years, and now they know that they are sitting on the, the world's biggest uh, deposit of coal. coal. Uh, they have tons of minerals, so they are so wealthy, but they are just too uh, underdeveloped to take care of everything. So but Mongolia, with time, will be like a big player for sure. But right now, it's like a very tiny, small little nation. So we're going to hear a lot of more more about Mongolia for sure. My idea when I was doing this was that I wanted, I didn't want to do research before. I wanted to just go there and find out about Mongolia there instead of reading up on it, which sounds kind of weird maybe, but I didn't want to have any ideas before from other sources what Mongolia is supposed to be and then come there and work from that platform. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to find people, talk to them, ask them about their lives, their what they were seeing for themselves in the future, their history, where they come from basically. And with that create something that could be pretty true to who they are. Still, I mean, it's a documentary, it's a film, I have material, I've edited the whole thing, so of course it's, it's colored by myself in some way. It's sort of impossible to get away from that, but I wanted to be as honest as possible. So, therefore, I didn't do any research before. It all happened when I was there. So I spent a lot of time in Mongolia, probably six months altogether over these ten years. 